church, as y'all come ready to worship this morning. Give Jesus some praise in this house. He is good. He is faithful. Darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe Oh, I believe in signs and wonders And I have resurrection power Yes, I do Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven. Yes, it is. Oh, my praise belongs to you forever. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause Christ rewrote my story. I'm testified by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. We'll come together, sons and daughters. We're bought with blood and washed in water. We'll sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Oh, our God will finish what He started. Story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. I don't know about you, but I came to praise God this morning. So let's get our hands clapping. Come on, right here. Yeah. He is good and he's bringing dead things back to life. Yes, he is. No, he's not the Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead and you're not done with me, God the Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead and you're not done and you're not done and you're not Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead Rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is my testimony. From death to life. Cause Christ rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. you 
that you are here. Well, good morning. I'm Stephanie, 
And I am the connections pastor here at Lighthouse, actually. Some of you may not know me. I have been in a very different season of life. And um, I am honored just to be up here today. Truly, truly honored. Pastor Cole and Julie are celebrating their anniversary this week. So, yeah, we want them to have a good time. They're finishing up their celebration this weekend, and they will be back next week. So make sure you come and uh, hear Pastor Cole. He's the lead pastor here. Before I get to going, um, I wanted to take a moment and just say thank you to everyone who has donated and cooked and cleaned and mowed and prayed and just encouraged my family and I. We would not be doing as well as we're doing if it was not for our family and friends and our church family and just all of our extended family. I can't, I just can't say thank you enough. And if I keep talking about it, I'm going to cry. I'm not going to make it through what I need to say today. Um, I also just want to say thank you to all of my doctors and my nurses that have walking this out with me over the last few years and are continuing to walk this out with me. If you're here today, thank you for coming. I invited all of them to come, so I hope some of them are here. And... Um, I'm just honored. I really am honored to be up here. Over the last few years, um, I've gotten the privilege to get to share something that God has been really doing in my life. And I've been using the term suffering well, and I've taught on it a few times. Today, I'm going to go in a little different direction. If you didn't hear the first one, you don't have to hear the first one to understand today, but that one's on YouTube. It's on my social media page because I've preached that one a few times, and now I believe that if we are suffering well and doing a good job and growing our relationship with the Lord, then things will be different each time we come to the Lord and that he'll be revealing new things to us and we'll be growing and he'll be sharing new things that he's birthing in us. And so I just want to share a little bit with you today on what God has really taught me about suffering well. I want to give you a little bit of a backstory. The suffering well idea was first birthed in me in June of 2019 when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And right after that in September, my dad died suddenly. Um, my sister was diagnosed also with breast cancer early. Now, I was 36 when this happened, and she was younger. They caught hers much earlier, and she's doing really well. She just had her checkup. Everything's going really good. Praise the Lord. She's doing good. I had chemo, radiation, surgeries that took me through summer of 2020. In December of 2020, we found our marriage kind of on, I like to say it was kind of on death's door. But God... And then in January of 2021, I lost my mom, my best friend, all of a sudden. And so in tw through 2021, 2020 through, we were rebuilding, picking up pieces, getting back into a new normal. And just about the time where we thought things were getting back to normal, last summer in July, I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic cancer. Metastatic means that it's very aggressive and very invasive. It's in my bones and in my liver. It's really uncurable. As far as medical doctors are concerned, they're, they're working to prolong my life, to give me as many years here as possible. Aside from miraculous healing, I will be doing chemo indefinitely. I am asking and believing God for a miracle in my life, of course. But regardless of what he decides to do with my life, I am choosing to suffer well and choosing to allow him to teach me how to suffer well. And that's really what I want to share with you today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, just come. You're already here. Holy Spirit, come. Speak through me. Use my story, God. I want to point people to you. I want my story to be one of hope and encouragement that shares your love with them. In Jesus' name. I don't tell you my story to get attention or for a pity party. It's actually really hard to share sometimes because I don't want people to think that this is about me. I want them to know it's about Jesus. But each of us has a story. I want us to know that we can come through suffering without being riddled with depression and fear and anxiety, that we can come through suffering with our hope intact, with our faith intact, and trusting the Lord more than we've ever trusted him before, stronger than we've ever been before. Because suffering is going to produce something in your life. But what it produces is up to us. When we suffer, we tend to try to 
um, ignore it or, re or, or replace it, we tend to not want to face the reality of what's happening, and we immerse ourselves in things like social media and TV and whatever you want to call it, addictions, this and that. We try to escape. Now, those things are good in moderate. Well, some of them are good in moderation, not all of them. Uh, correct, correction. Um, but we, if we're not careful, we're going to miss what God wants to do right there in the storm. So I've wrestled with these words, suffering well, for a while, and I think I will always wrestle with them. I have not arrived. I'm not up here saying, I got this down pat. I know how to suffer well, and all my days are great. Nope. We're all on this journey together. I might just be a few steps ahead of you, and I'm sure there's those of, those of you in this room that are a few steps ahead of me. So I want to define what suffering well looks like for my personal definition. Suffering well means that while I'm experiencing the pain, either physically or mentally, I'm seeking what new life God is birthing in me. In other words, in the darkest times, you're seeking something new regardless of the outcome that you may see. So my heart today is to help us shift our perspective a little bit when it comes to how we face suffering. I've been sharing a lot on my social media pages, so for those of you who are following me, thank you for all the encouragement. I need it. I need to, I need to be encouraged, and I love hearing all of your stories. And the two questions that I get asked the most is, how do you trust the Lord? How do you trust the Lord when you can't see anything good, and do you ever just fall apart or have a bad day? And how do you bring yourself out of those bad days? And these are the two questions that I want to try to give us some handles to, and I'm trying to give myself handles to. Because my life is a one day at a time sort of thing right now. So, do I have bad days? Yes. I am human. And I have cancer. Of course I have bad days. <laughs> I have days where I am in a lot of pain. Now, let me share something really good. When I first was diagnosed this time, I, I didn't realize what bad of shape I had. I had been hurting for a while. And I didn't really know what was going on by the time I found it out. I don't know if you guys know anything about pain pills, but I was on a fentanyl patch, and I was taking Dilaudid for breakthrough medication, for break, breakthrough pain. Yeah, it's a lot. Those of you who know, that, that's really bad. You know it's really bad when the doctor comes in, and they give you this nose squirt thing. It's called Narcan, Narcon, whatever that is. I don't, and I'm sitting there with Pastor Julie, and they're like, listen, this is in case she overdoses. You have to spray this up her nose and call the an ambulance. And we're looking at each other like, What? I did not know. I have never been on that strong of pain medicine. So you know it's really bad. But today, I am down to one pain pill a day. Yes. Okay? So, my immune system is compromised. I can't hug people. And I hate that with a passion. I'm a hugger. I like to hug people. My daughter was actually sick this week. And I'm standing at the door of her bedroom trying to toss her medicine and, you know, say, drink this and drink some Gatorade. And, and my mama's heart is sad because I can't just go in there and hug her and hold her and make her feel better. That's hard for me as a mom. Mentally, I have bad days. I'm afraid of what the future looks like. Some days I want to give up, and I'm like, is there a point to this? There probably isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about the what ifs of my future. So I'm not putting on a front here. I know that I have bad days. I have moments of complete mental breakdowns where fear grips me so tightly that I have to fight really hard to trust God. And I feel sometimes that I could get stuck in that place, in those thoughts. But getting stuck there is a very dangerous place to be. See, if you get stuck there, the truth is, you're not going to find peace there. You're not going to find strength there. You won't find the will to fight back there. You'll give up. And ultimately, ultimately, whether physically, mentally, or spiritually, you'll die in that place if you don't get unstuck. So I want to help you get unstuck the way God is teaching me how to get unstuck. After my first diagnosis in 2019, I was laying in bed that night, and I was stuck. And I was like, I knew I needed to get up and go talk to the Lord 
And I didn't really want to because we don't want to do that when we don't feel good, right? We just want to lay there. And so about an hour or so goes by, and I'm like, just get up, Stephanie. So I got up. I wasn't sleeping anyways. It wasn't going to happen. I got up, and I sat down on my couch, and I didn't really know what to say. And I just sat there, and I said four words. I'm like, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. And at first, it was kind of just like, I trust you, Lord. You know, like, you don't really feel like saying it, but you know you need to say it. And then it turned into, I trust you, Lord. 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 And a supernatural power came into my life, and a breakthrough happened, and peace came. And you don't find that peace without something supernatural. See, there's something you face when you're brought to a place where control is totally taken away in order to seek what new life God is birthing in you, though, you first have to learn what trusting the Lord really means. What does that mean? So over the last few years, I've really begun to unpack that, mainly because you guys just keep asking me, <laughs> which is good. Because <laughs> they're like, how do you show them? I'm like, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. But thank goodness we have the word of God because it tells us what to do. So in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. There's that word again. Trust, trust. Okay, trust is a really cool word. I didn't know this. It is both a noun and a verb. And we often see the words faith and trust almost used interchangeably. But there's a key difference. And somebody said it best like this. It says, faith is a belief system. Trust is an action. I didn't write that. Somebody way smarter than me wrote that. Let me say it again. Faith is a belief system. Trust is an action. Faith is believing that God is who he says he is and that what God can do, only he can do. But trust takes it a step further, they said. It's making the willful choice to trust that God will do what he promises. A willful choice. And I feel like we all get to this place in life all the time where we, like, like the man who fell at Jesus' feet and say, Lord, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. You know? And I feel like that's how life is. It's this lifelong game of tug of war. You like my rope? I was going to drag it out here, but I, that's not a good idea. I'm only allowed to be walking right now. Um, and they put it in front of me instead of behind me. They're like, let's put it behind you. I'm like, no, 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 I'll trip over it back there. Then it'll be bad. I'll fall, break a hip, and it'll be, all be over. <laughs> okay? But life is this game of tug of war. Now, I don't know how you play tug of war in school, but at our school, when we played tug of war, there was a big mud pit in the middle. Okay? And I am a relatively competitive person. I mean, just a little bit. I was an athlete, believe it or not. Um, not basketball, volleyball. Um, I can't play basketball. My brothers say I foul too much. I'm like, get off me. Don't touch me. Anyways, so I was determined not to get in that mud. Number one, I don't like mud. Do I look like the kind of girl that likes mud? Now, I'm not afraid to get dirty. But I'm one of those moms that your kid comes up to you and they got spaghetti all over them. Like, don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> okay? So number one, I don't like the mud. Number two, I don't like to lose. And so I worked really hard during tug of war when I was playing. And I feel like this is such a good example of how our life is with the Lord. It's this tension every day between faith and fear. Trusting God and giving up. And right in the middle is the mud pit where we can get stuck. And we need God to pull us out. Because here's the thing, you can't play tug of war by yourself. I mean, come on. Really? That is not fun. You need help. We need help. Trusting God is a lifelong game of tug of war where we'll pull back and forth a little bit each day. The enemy on one side of my life, cancer diagnosis one, the death of my dad, 
my sister's diagnosis, my mom's death, my marriage, cancer diagnosis too. The enemy trying every time to pull me back into that mud pit. But I'm learning to say, God, I need you to take the rope and pull me back to the other side. I'm making the willful choice to say, I'm going to trust in the promises God has given me. And that's what I want to share with you today. Because trusting God is making a willful choice that God will do what he promises. And those promises are what helps us get through the bad days and get up out of the mud pit. So God promises us a lot. you got to read the Bible if you want to know all the promises. But I want to share with you three promises that I am keeping in front of me daily right now. One promise is that God promises to give strength in our weakness. In order to gain God's strength, we have to become weak. But we're not conditioned to think this way. We're conditioned to think that weakness is something to be ashamed of. That surrender is giving up. But God's way says, be humble. Recognize that you need a savior. (laughs) This is hilarious. Y'all, if you read the Bible, it'll change your life. Okay? Paul talks about weakness in 2 Corinthians, and he says, I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weakness. Then he goes on to say in verse 9, the Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. He goes on again. Paul is so good. I want to be like Paul when I grow up. Well, like Jesus and then like Paul. Anyways, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness. I had to stop and be like, am I reading this right? I delight in weakness and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I'm like, Lord, this is the exact opposite of how we're thought how we're trained to think here. His power is made perfect in our weakness. I don't know about you, but I need his power in my life. I can't do this by myself. And then not only does he say, I'm going to boast in my weakness, he takes it a step further and says, I'm going to delight. I'm like, Paul. I'm going to delight in weakness, in hardships, in difficulties. I'm like, this sounds awful. But do you know why Paul says this? Because Paul knows how to win tug of war. He probably won every time. He knows if we'll allow our weakness to shine, that God's power will pick up the rope behind us and pull us out of that mud pit. In the hospital where I received the second diagnosis in July of last summer, the scariest questions came back on a whole new level than the first time. Knowing that the prognosis wasn't good, that would probably limit my years here. And that those years could turn to months if my body didn't respond to treatment. The what-ifs were heart-wrenching. And I, like I said, there's not a day goes by that I don't think about the what-ifs of my future. And I don't slide back into the mud pit a little bit. Some of us like the mud pit. Y'all, you know, some of us set up camp there. We're comfortable there. We get attention there. I mean, come on. Listen, I ain't got nothing to lose up here. I'm just telling you what the Lord said. You can take it up with him. Okay? I've been comfortable in my mud pit too. So some of us are comfortable there. Others of us, we don't think we need any help. Our pride gets in the way. See, trust is an action. Trust requires surrender. Think about a relationship where trust has been broken or a relationship that you've had over a long period of time. How hard did you have to work to rebuild trust? How hard is it to trust a person, to release? You are ultimately taking your life and putting it in the hands of somebody else when you're trusting them with you. And that's what God's saying is you can trust me with you. It's about saying not my will, but your will. See, we're okay to say that. We don't like to actually do it. 
Because deep down, we're all control freaks. And you'd be like, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. Maybe not some days on some things. And some days you're like, Lord, I don't, not that plan. (laughs) Nope. You can have all of this. You can't have that. Trust is making the willful choice. He's waiting for you to make a willful choice to surrender and say, Lord, I am weak. I cannot fight this on my own. Here's the rope. And I'm like, this is such a hard concept for us to be weak. But it is in our weakness that the second promise comes. And God promises to show up. He will show up every time. He promises to be faithful. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 says, The Lord is faithful And he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. My first diagnosis, I was 36. I told you that. You usually don't get a mammogram until you're 40. My OBG doctor, he was a man of God. He said, let's just do it a couple years earlier just to kind of get a baseline. Wasn't really anything going on. We didn't really have a reason for it. But I was like, okay. I trust him. I've known him for a while. He actually passed away a week before my mammogram. I saw a new doctor, and that doctor was like, why are you getting a mammogram? I was like, I don't know. Dr. Ingram wanted me to get one, and so I'm going to get one. And he's like, okay, everything looks okay, but I would never go against what he said, so I went. If I would not have gone, if I would have waited till I was 40, I probably wouldn't be here today. God was faithful in that moment. He was faithful. Now, I know what you're thinking. But now you have cancer. Again, I know. I'll get there, okay? Hold on. Hold on. Our marriage should have ended. I don't have time to tell you the whole story. But God did a walking on water miracle in our marriage. You have to trust me. And he's here today, and I'm here today, and we're making it. Yes, so good. God will show up every time. A few months ago... When I was starting chemo and we were trying to get the right dosage, I was really sick. I'm still really sick, but thankfully not as sick. And I had been in bed for like five, seven days. Two of those days, which I was pretty much set up camp in the bathroom, if you know what I mean. It was terrible. And I was a mess. I was just like, this isn't worth it. I don't think this is not quality. I cannot do this. It is too terrible. And I wanted to give up. Those were bad days. And I know what to do on those bad days. I'm like, Stephanie, get up. Get up and go sit with the Lord. And I found myself in Hebrews, I'm not really sure, probably on the Bible app, because when I don't know where to start, I just open it up. I'm like, where's the verse of the day? Praise the Lord for technology, right? (laughs) So Hebrews 10.23 said, Let us unswervingly hold to the hope we profess, For he who promised is faithful. And I keyed in on the word unswervingly because I was swerving. (laughs) I was all over the place, doubting, questioning, thoughts. But when I sat with him, I just read that scripture verse over and over. See, when you don't know what to pray, you just pray scripture. Because it's living and it's powerful and he shows up every time. It doesn't mean everything was okay. But a peace came. And he reminded me, I'm going to show up for you every time, Stephanie. Every time. My road seems dark, dim, and impossible. But he is faithful to fulfill the promises that he's given me. It might not be the life I plan to live. I might not be certain about what my future holds. I struggle to understand sometimes. But then God reminds me of his greatest promise of all. God promises eternal life. And if I'm going to learn to suffer well, I have to learn to see with an eternal perspective, with eternal lenses. And I knew this before, but it is different now in my life. This is hard for us. Because we're scared of the unknown. 
We can't comprehend what we can't see. And that's normal. It's part of being human. That's why God writes to us in scripture. And I always like to put my name in there like he's talking to me, like my father. And he says, Stephanie, this is why my thoughts are higher than yours. My ways are higher than yours. Your mind can't comprehend, Stephanie, the great things I have in store for you because you love me. He says in 2 Corinthians 4.18, Stephanie, Stephanie's not in there, by the way. You get where I'm going? Don't go out of here saying she changed scripture. Fix your eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We have to learn to trust the Lord with the things we can't see on this side of eternity. There are mysteries we won't understand, questions we will not get answers to here. But let me tell you about what you can see that's eternal. And that's the story of the people of God. It's your story. It's my story. And when people see your story, then they believe. And then they share. And then they believe. And then they share. And then this powerful legacy that you can see through generations See, this is what I want to come out of my suffering. This gives my suffering purpose. I want my family, my girls, my friends to know the Lord, to love the Lord. It makes my suffering worth it. I'm not fighting for my eternity because I know mine is set. I'm fighting to leave behind a story that points people to their eternity, to Jesus. That's what we're here for, right? I think sometimes, and this is something new that God's teaching me, sometimes I'm afraid that if God doesn't decide to heal me here, that people will use that as an excuse not to believe. But God recently told me, Stephanie, that's not true. He said, I don't want people to look at you and say, man, she's really sick. He said, I want people to look at you and say, man, look how she follows Jesus. And you have a story. See, this is my story. You have a story that is powerful. You have a story that will point people to Jesus. It is the way we walk out our suffering that will show people Jesus. For my girls, I have a 13 and an 11-year-old. I want them to watch their mom follow after Jesus no matter what. It's the way we walk out our suffering that will point people to Jesus as the worship team comes back. So I go in for scans every three months, check on how things are doing. The first, first scan that I had after the first three months of treatment, the biggest tumor in my liver shrunk by half. Yeah. And this is amazing. They use the term significant shrinkage. <laughs> and they were like, this doesn't usually happen. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> and you're, you're, you could be sitting there like, but yeah, you still have cancer. I do. But God is moving. It may not be the way I planned. But remember, I'm trusting his plan. You might be saying, well, you lost your mom and your dad. I did. Where was God in that? Oh, he was there. Comforting me, reminding me that his promise of eternal life means I will see them again. That death is not the end. So how do I trust God when I can't see anything good? How do I get myself out of the mud pit on really bad days? I have to choose daily to make the willful choice to trust that God will do what he promises. His plans for my life are greater than what I can see and understand. But I do know in my weakness, he is strong. He'll show up every time. And his promises are eternal. He numbers my days. He gives life and he takes life. He wins tug of war every time. Yeah. 
One of the most beautiful promises that I love to read is in Psalm 34, verses 4 through 8. It says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look at him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. I don't know where you are in your life today. Maybe you haven't even accepted the promise of eternal life. Today is that day. You've been trying for a long time to do it by yourself. You may have other people fooled. God's not fooled. He's ready for you to say, take the rope. Here's the rope, Lord. Pull me back. The longer you hold on to your will and your plans, the more your belief system will break down and you'll become less and less trusting. And you won't find the peace that you're so desperately desiring in your life. If you'll just close your eyes for me for a minute. I want to give just a few minutes for us to respond to the Holy Spirit. You know You know where you are. You know if you need to surrender your life. Will you make a willful choice this morning to say, Lord, I want to accept you as my Savior. If you're ready to do that this morning, nobody looking around, will you just raise your hand so I can see you and pray for you? And when you raise your hand, you look at me because I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God right there. Thank you. Welcome. 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 Thank you. Welcome. Yes. I see you back there, sweetheart. Welcome. I see you right there. Welcome home. Welcome right there, right there. Yes. So thankful. I see you up there. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making the willful choice. Welcome to the family of God. If I didn't see your hand, it's okay. God sees it. He's most important. You pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord, it's time. I surrender. I make a willful choice to give my life to you. I trust in your promises. I believe that you lived. I believe that you died and that you rose again for me. Take this rope and pull me to the side of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, let's celebrate. Thank you. So exciting. We're going to take it a step further today as section leaders come up and get ready because trusting God requires action on our part. It requires action. Section leaders are here to pray with you today. They're here to remind you and pray the promises of God over your life. We need to be encouraged when we need to encourage one another. So as they sing this song, if you need that encouragement and you need somebody to pray the promises over your life, I encourage you to get out of your seat and come and get prayed for. We all need to be encouraged. So I also encourage you, don't leave. Take this moment to sing this prayer to the Lord, to let something shift. If you're stuck and you need help, you need prayer. And you need to say, I trust you, Lord. So let's stand together. As they sing this song, the altar people are ready to pray. And then I'll come up and dismiss in a few minutes. But let's dive in one more time. Come on, worship team.
your hands with me. If you're not comfortable with that, just lay them out like this and say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. And I make a willful choice to trust in your promises. No matter what I see, I trust you, Lord. Now praise him. Yes, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Come on, one more time. Oh, one more time. Go after it. Go after it. Stir it up. And I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. for the first time, please get out your cell phone and text in the word SAVED to the number 850-266-7667. If you're new, text the word NEW. Here we go, you ready? You can now text the word SERVE to this number. We have a new process for you jumping on a team here and serving. And listen, serving is eternal, y'all. It's about serving others, getting ourselves unfocused on us and focused on the Lord so other people can come in and accept him. So if you'd like to jump in to serve, no more waiting for house party, no more putting it off, text the word serve to this number. Honestly, you can text whatever you want to this number because it's not a robot. It's us. We'd love for you just to text us in and say, hello, we want to connect with you. Also, if you'd like to sponsor a youth for camp, for summer camp, yeah, you'd like to sponsor a youth for camp, get on the church center app or text the word give and choose camp sponsorship and send a kid to camp so their life will be changed. Cool? We're so thankful for a generous family here. Pastor Cole and Julie will be back next week. Make sure you come say hello to them and hear Pastor Cole. Also, I'll be over here. I can't hug you, but I'd love to say hi to you. So if you'd like to come say hello, or if you'd like to share your story, you can follow me on Instagram, social media, all those other places. I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying, okay? So get on there. Share your story of suffering well with me. I'd love to hear it. Truly, I would. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for showing up every time to help us get out of that mud pit. We're just so thankful for eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see y'all next week.